Because the future for oil is so uncertain, people are starting to look at more widespread gas reserves. But sometimes, the only way to get at them is by a process called fracking. France said no. They've called a halt to it in South Africa. And in parts of the United States, folk are up in arms over it. But what actually is fracking? Fracking is a way of mining for hard-to-reach gas reserves, trapped deep underground in the most common type of sedimentary rock, shale. This all once started out as mud, but over millions of years of heat and pressure, it's been forged into rock. And this type of shale has ended up with these distinct individual layers. They're almost stacked up like the pages of a book. As the rock formed, organic matter trapped between these layers turned into natural methane gas. And there's potentially enough of it in the UK to meet gas demands for decades. Problem is, it's deep underground. And the only way to get to it is to drill. But you've got to drill down a distance that's about twice the height of Ben Nevis. And even then, the problem's not solved because the gas is held within pockets within those compressed layers of rock. How do you get it out? To release it from where it's embedded deep underground, you need a tool that's flexible, powerful, and can find its own way into every weakness. To get that, you just have to turn on the tap. The high-pressure water can be forced down the pipe right into the heart of the rock, where it'll find any weaknesses and burrow into the cracks, prizing apart the shale and hopefully releasing the gas. A nice piece of fracking. When they do it for real, it's deep underground. And it's not just one fracture, it's many, many fractures spreading a long way through the bed of shale. And it's not just water that's sent down, they send down sand as well. Because the little grains of sand then serve to prop all those cracks open. So all the pockets of gas are now joined up and can seep back towards the pipe where they can be easily extracted. But disturbing the bedrock of the earth like this can have unexpected side effects. Last year in Lancashire, earthquakes of magnitudes up to 2.3 were triggered in Britain's first fracking tests. But according to the British Geological Survey, they shouldn't have caused any damage. There are lots of faults around below us. They're everywhere very small faults, and probably some water got into one of the faults and was able to lubricate the two planes that meet in the fault so that the fault moved a little bit. Size-wise, how would those earthquakes rank up with what you might expect in the UK anyway? In a typical month, we might have, say, 10 earthquakes of about that size, purely natural, and larger ones as well. Is there any chance that with fracking we'll get more significant quakes? There are probably limits to the, the amount of energy these earthquakes can produce in, in the shale that's being fracked. In effect, you can't get a very large earthquake. But on top of the risk of quakes, some people worry that chemicals added to the fracking water, or even methane itself, could leak into groundwater and affect drinking supplies. The distance between where the fracking is going on and where the water is being taken out is so large and the rock is so dense and impermeable that it would be really hard for the, for the methane to get anywhere beyond a few metres. So the hope is that the risks can be managed, meaning fracking could be carried out safely in the UK. But in this country, it's still experimental and we don't know how it'll affect the price of gas.